Hi everyone, welcome back to Renovation School. In this episode, I want to show you how to enlarge a window. Before I get into the details, let's watch some before and after shots. I ordered a new window and after receiving it I got my measurements from it and I'm just leaving some marks for myself to know where exactly it's going to be located and then by using my level I'm going to leave some marks on the brick just so I know where to cut this. Keep in mind for this project we're just changing the height of this window. We're not touching the width because it's going to require a lot of more structural framing from the inside part of the house. And then I took my 12 inch electric cutoff saw and cut through all the brick right on the marks that I made previously. As you can see this is a very dusty process, it's a very good idea to protect your eyes, ears and put a good quality mask on. After the cutting is done, it's time to remove the bricks. And I'm going to show you how exactly I remove these. I have a flat headed screwdriver there that I place it onto the mortar. And then I hit it with my hammer all the way in. It comes loose fairly easy and then I remove it all by hand. Once you remove one, you can remove the entire course of that brick very easy. It's a good idea to save these bricks in case you have any damage to your brick wall in the future. You can replace them with these ones. So I went back inside and cut through all the caulking around these window trim and then I started removing them one by one. It's time to transfer my measurements to the drywall so I know where exactly to cut it for the new window opening. By using this level, I'm able to make very nice and straight lines. Now that I marked all this drywall, it's time to cut it. I'm gonna cut through these marks that I made a few times just so I can remove the drywall a lot easier. After removing the insulation, it's time to make a new windowsill plate. In order to do that, I cut a piece of a scrap baseboard to the size that I needed and then I used it as a guide to make or transfer my new marks for a new windowsill plate. I cut the bottom portion of the marks that I made with the multi saw that I have, just like so, and then by using a hammer I removed them. After cutting my insulation to the size I needed, it's time to install the new windowsill plate. I put it in place, I hammered it down so it sits right exactly when it needs to be and then I screwed it from the top to the studs and to the sides. I 
I use my reciprocating saw to cut through all this exterior sheeting. This way my opening is going to be ready for my new window. Now my opening is ready for the new window, but before installing it, I did apply some waterproofing membrane to protect the window sill plate in case of any water leakage in the future. It's a great idea to do this to all four sides, but because I'm going to be using aluminum flashing after the window is installed, I only did it to the bottom. After this was done, I also taped down that building wrap and the tar paper right to this new membrane this way in case of any water leakage the whole window sill is going to be protected it's finally time to install the new window we put it in place from the inside and then i went to the outside to double check and make sure it's sitting on the right spot i just placed some shims on top of this window to make sure it's not moving while i'm making my final adjustments it's very important to make sure all four corners are nice and plumb if it's not level and plumb the window may not operate properly you may have a hard time opening or closing it. You might also have some air drafts coming inside the house if it's not level and true. So make sure it's sitting nice and proper. With the help of these air shims, I was able to do that final adjustment and make it exactly true and level. So now that the window is sitting in the perfect spot, it's time to attach it to the studs. I'm going to place some shims between the window extension and the studs to fill up that gap. And then I use my drill to make two pilot holes so the window extension doesn't break or crack when I put my screws in it. I repeat this on all four sides and double check to make sure the windows are still setting nice, level and plumb. The window is installed and it's time to remove those shims. By using a good quality knife, I'm going to score the shims and then break them off. Before you apply the insulation and put on your trim work, it's very important to double check and make sure your window is operating 100%. Just open up your window and try it a few times, make sure it works nice and smooth. So this is how this window looks as of this minute. This is the location of the screws that I put in and you can see how many I put on. It's very important to keep checking this to make sure it's level and plumb. It's the most important part of this whole project. If it's not true level and plumb, you're going to run into many issues later on. It's time to apply the insulation. Make sure your window is completely closed and locked before you apply your insulation. Here I'm going to be using an insulation that is specifically designed for doors and windows. If you use the wrong type of a spray foam, it may expand too much when it's curing and then your window may not open properly. I'm going to wait about 30 minutes till this foam insulation is all dried up. After it dries up, I'm going to get myself a knife and shave off all that excess material from the inside. And then it's time to install the trim work. I normally cut my top and bottom piece first, I put it in place and I nail it down in a couple of spots just so it stays in place. Then I cut my side pieces, I use a lot of wood glue for the miter joints, I put it in place once I'm happy with the location of it and once I notice the miter joint looks nice and properly, then I nail it down to the frame and to the studs. After the trim work was done, I grabbed some spackling compound and filled up all the holes and then I did some caulking and painted this whole window. I didn't have time to film this whole process for you after this, but I'm gonna show you the result at the end of the video. It's pretty easy. I'm gonna make some other videos about filling these holes and painting a window jam and stuff later on. The inside is done, now let's go to the outside. To ensure this brick is not sucking up all the water from my motor, I'm gonna wet it down first. Then I'm gonna apply my motor on top of it and then and instead of installing bricks for the window cell here, I got myself a very nice and solid concrete cell and then I'm going to cut it to the size and then install it in place, which I'm going to show you in a few seconds. Okay. 
This is the concrete sill that I was talking about. I'm gonna wet it down the same way so it's not gonna suck up all that water from my motor. And then with the help of the homeowner, I'm gonna put it in place right on top of my new and wet motor. After putting it in place, I made sure it's sloped away from the house so it does what it's designed for and move all that water and rain away from the window and the brickwork here. And then I relayed the rest of the brickwork on the left side of the window. As you can see on this picture, I relayed the brick on the left side of it. I could do the same thing exactly on the right side, but that right side is sitting very high from the ground and it was a lot more difficult to do it, so I didn't touch it. But in a few minutes, I'm going to show you how exactly I took care of that and color match it with the rest of the bricks. I let this sit down for a full day and the next day I called someone from my local classified to come and do the aluminum flashing all around this window. That aluminum flashing is going to work like waterproofing and it's going to kind of stop the water to get in between these seams and kind of waterproof all around this window. Now it's time to fix that motor stain that was left onto the bricks. I tried to brush it off with a very stiff brush but it wasn't coming off. I washed it a couple of times, it didn't come off. So I went to the Home Depot and I got some of that waterproofing stain and sealer. This stain is designed for wood but it does an amazing job here as well. So right here I got myself a paintbrush. I'm gonna dip it into this stain and then I'm gonna dry it up with that rag that I have in my hand and then I apply that almost half dry brush onto the brick surface. I'm going to repeat the same process to all that stained areas. There you have it guys, this is the final result. Once this stain is dried up, it's going to look even better. This room is a lot more brighter than it was before. I'm going to show you some before shots as well so you can kind of imagine how it was before. If you guys want to watch some more renovation videos like this one, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, please make sure you hit that like button. It really helps me out. If you have any questions, please make sure you drop it in the comment section below. And I will make sure to answer them as soon as I can. Thank you very much again for watching Renovation School. All the best. Till next time. Peace.